Hey, it's Joseph here. Whether you are a beginner or SketchUp Ninja, there's always a function that you did not know that existed or you just simply overlooked. And I'm hoping to cover some of those today, so follow me along. First of all, let's start the SketchUp model. So this is a model that I will be using today. Although I have modeled this house myself, the credit for designing the house goes to Daniel Hubble Architects, which I will leave the info in the description. So getting back to the model, so starting off with page up and down. As you can see, I have several views that are saved up. So from this one to the next one, I can just click on to move to the next. However, there's a keyboard shortcut page up and down, which I can utilize to do so. So for example, if I wanna go down the list, I just press page down and again and again and again to show the progress of building of this model. So it was set up this way. It's easier to just go down the list or go up the list to explain your project. And even for just the perspective views, so this one back, so you can just kind of explain things and so on. And then you can just press page down and then go to the next view, which is a section here. So instead of just clicking back and forth of different scenes, which can be kind of distracting in presentations, you want to utilize those keys such as just pressing page down, or if you want to come back up, I can just press page up and then go back. So you see that there is sort of an animation between the scenes. So if I were to go from this view here, notice how the model sort of flips around. So if I hit page down again, when I go to the stairs, notice how there's sort of an animation that goes on. Whilst this is very useful in presentation, just so that everyone is aware where you are and such, sometimes when you're modeling, this is not as useful because you're having to just flip back and forth and wait for those moments to finish. So what I typically do whilst I am modeling is I go to window, model info, and when this dialog pops up, I just click on animation and I just uncheck enable scene transition. And once I do that, if I go to the next scene, it just pops back and forth. Whereas if I keep that transition on, there's going to be that transition or the animation in between. So it is useful to keep that enabled when you're doing presentations. However, during the modeling phase, it is useful to just uncheck it so that you're not wasting additional times in between. Although it is two seconds, if you're dealing with 10 different scenes, it can kind of pile up. So the next one is just navigation in general. So in my case, I have a mouse that looks like this and then you just press on the wheel to orbit. So if I just press that button down, I am able to orbit around. A lot of people are aware of this. However, whilst you're doing it, if you just keep your eyes on the bottom of the screen, you will notice that it changes to shift, to pan and control to suspend gravity. Whilst control is not so important, although it is very cool, it is important to remember shift. You hold that down to just kind of pan. And notice the mouse cursor changed to the hand, which is equivalent to this icon that is right here, hand or pan. So a lot of people also call this as a hand tool. So this does exactly the same thing, whereas you're just dragging it around. Switching back and forth between orbit and pan tool is a bit troublesome. Whichever tool that you are in. So the preferred method is to hold down the scroll wheel and then orbit around. And whenever you need to pan around, you just hold down shift key together to pan and look to the left and look to the right. And if you're a beginner, this does take some practice to get used to. However, if you get used to this method, you're going to become a lot more efficient. And this is a preferred method of all the experts. Whichever tool you're in, such as the line tool, if you were to draw something, if you can't really reach this corner here, what you will do is you hold down shift key and then you start to orbit and then you can just kind of drag it around to reach this side and you can just continue to draw that line without actually exiting out of it. And if I were to just draw a shape right here and then let's say I had made that cube 
And then if I were to try and copy it over to the other side of the house, and then you start to realize, well, I can't really reach there, what do I do? So you can just hold down shift key and then use orbit to reach that side and then just paste it right there. So it is definitely useful because you don't have to cancel out whatever the action that you have been doing. You can just continue on doing whatever you are trying to do. Which brings to the next point, which is to assign different key for the orbit. So currently SketchUp ships out, if you hit O, then it will become the orbit short key. Because I am hoping that everyone has a mouse with a scroll wheel, and you should if you're using SketchUp. Don't stick to the trackpads and whatnot. So if you have a scroll wheel, then you're gonna be using orbit that way, so we don't really need O dedicated for the orbit. And another useful tool that you're gonna be using often is offset, which starts with O, so it kind of makes sense for it to be dedicated as the key O. If I hit O, then my offset tool becomes activated. So whenever I'm trying to offset something, I can just hit O, and then I'm gonna be able to just offset that element. Now, how do I actually assign shortcuts? So in Windows, if you go to Window Preferences, and then the Window Preferences window shows up, you can go to Shortcuts, and you can just search here, Filter, so Offset, and then there's gonna be tool offset and I'm just gonna type in O right here and then just click on plus button here. And then it is probably going to pop up something like O is currently used by Orbit and would you like to reassign as O to tools offset? Yes, and I would like to, so that becomes O and then I say okay and then that's just going to stick. Now you probably have noticed that everything else has been sort of white out although I have everything else outside. So as soon as I double click this component, everything kind of goes away. This is useful when you're trying to model something that is inside a building, like an interior furniture element, something that is very tiny, whereas your entire model is a lot bigger. So this is a function of hide rest of model, which stays inside of view, component edit, and the hide rest of the model will be right here. Now I have dedicated H as a shortcut for this and you can do the same by going to window preferences and if you just search hide and then you can just kind of look for hide rest of the model and assign H key in there then if I just hit H it's gonna show rest of the model here so if I need to ever reference the other model so if I want to connect the line from here to here I can just reference that However, if I don't want to see that because I am inside of the house and a very complex model, then I can just hit H again so that everything just kind of goes away and I'm just in this sort of isolated area. And if you're used to sort of the isolate category or isolate element inside of Revit, this is sort of what it is. So this video is becoming slightly longer than I have anticipated, so I'm just gonna mention a few more shortcuts. There are quite a few shortcuts that really should have been included as sort of the default inside of SketchUp, and there are two more that I wanna mention. And first one is Save As. In a lot of other softwares, if you just hit Control shift s and it is dedicated for save as. Save as is slightly different to just save because save is just overriding something that you have opened up whereas save as will create an entirely independent copy of a file elsewhere. And those are quite useful when you're trying to make another option or the revision. So I use this quite often and it makes sense to have control shift s as a save as you can see file and save as i have that dedicated as control shift s and the next one is paste in place and this really should have received a shortcut and it doesn't by default my preferred shortcut is control shift v and actually paste in place or a special function paste on other software has this shortcut adobe softwares have control shift v as a paste in place and for for the same function kind of makes sense to have that shortcut and if you don't really know what it does let me just kind of explain because this is very very useful so the best example for paste in place would be copying an element from another model so for example if i were to have two same model however one has this element and the other one is missing that so i'm having to somehow carry this over to this side if i were to just simply copy and paste onto this side 
I'm gonna have harder time trying to put it into exact same position where it should be. It becomes a bit more cumbersome. So if I just undo that, and then if I just go to edit, paste in place, or rather control shift V, then it's just gonna show up on that position without fussing about. I actually don't really use just plain paste anymore. So if I were to array things, I'm just gonna use move tool and then I'm just gonna paste in place most of the time. So that is just an example of few shortcuts that became really useful and the things that I think SketchUp should have as a default. If you have your shortcuts or short keys that you feel that SketchUp should have had as a default, then please let me know by leaving in the comments and I would love to hear what sort of shortcuts that you guys use for certain functions of SketchUp. And I hope to do more of these videos going over shortcuts because I have ton of shortcuts that I use daily to make my workflow faster and more efficient. So I want to tell you all about it. So more videos coming up. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe to the channel if you wanna continue watching. And then I'll see you next time, bye.